In today's video, we're taking a look at 10 Essential VS Code Extensions for Every JavaScript Developer. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeremy, and this channel is all about helping you to become a better developer with the latest tools and techniques. All right, let's kick things off with number one. The first extension on the list is JavaScript Code Snippets. It adds a bunch of JavaScript related code snippets to VS Code so that you can code faster. So to install this extension, we're just gonna come over to the activity bar and click on extensions and then search for JavaScript and it's the first result. Again, it's called JavaScript Code Snippets. We're just gonna click on install and that's it. It's now installed. If we look in the description of this plugin, we can see a list of all of the snippets that it adds to VS Code. Let's try some of those out. So I'm just gonna open up my Explorer, open up this JavaScript file that I created. And so we see in the description, if I type in IMP, we should get an import module statement, and we do. And if I wanna import a module without a module name, I just type in IMN, and we get that import statement. There are a lot of snippets in here, so I definitely suggest you check this out. This can definitely save you time when writing JavaScript. The second plugin is called ESLint. It's a tool to help you find errors in your JavaScript code. So back in VS Code, we can see that I've installed the ESLint plugin, and I've just created a sample project here to help demonstrate this plugin. I should note that you must have ESLint installed either globally or in your workspace. And now with the ESLint plugin installed, we can see here that it says I should have used either let or const instead of var. The variable value is declared, but it's never read. And there's several other errors in this project. ESLint can help you catch errors before you ship your code saving you quite a bit of time. Number three on the list is JavaScript Booster. It adds 33 additional items related to JavaScript to the Quick Fixes menu. So back in VS Code, we can see that I have JavaScript Booster installed. And if we scroll down in the description of this plugin, we can see a list of all the Quick Fixes that are added. There's definitely some very helpful things here. One that I use all the time is replace string with template string. Let's try that out. So I've opened up this random JavaScript file that I used in the demo for the previous plugin, and here's a string. If I click inside this string, I see this little light bulb. That's the Quick Fixes menu. If I click on it, I can see replace with template string. And now we can see that we have back ticks instead of the double quotes. The JavaScript Booster plugin will definitely help you out when you're writing your JavaScript. Number four on our list is Prettier. It's basically just a code formatter for your JavaScript code. So back in VS Code, we can see that I have Prettier installed, and I've just created a sample project to demonstrate how this works. If we take a look in our package.json, we can see that I have Prettier installed in the dev dependencies, and there's this .prettierrc file that has single quote to true, print width to 80, and tab width set to two. Also in our settings.json, I have our default formatter set to Prettier. Now, if I open up this main.js file, we can see that I have some code here that just doesn't look right. For example, these plus signs have no spaces in between them, and the closing curly bracket is not aligned with the function. So to run the formatter in VS Code, we're just gonna open the command palette with Command Shift P, and then search for Format. We're just gonna choose Format Document, and we can see that it formats this JavaScript code for us. Let's make a few changes. So if I come back to the .prettierrc file, and change single quote to false, and tab width to four, and then save that file, we can come back and run the formatter again, and we can see that now the tabs are four spaces and we have double quotes instead. This is definitely a great thing to have, especially in large projects where you want all the code to follow the same formatting. It works great in teams so that everybody's following the same format. Number five on the list is import cost, and it displays the size of your imports. So back in VS Code, we can see that I have import cost installed. And if I open up this Angular project and open a TypeScript file, I can see import cost at work here. On the first line, we're importing component and view child from Angular Core. And the size of that is 317K. Let's add something else to this import statement. So I'm just gonna add on init. And now we've added 0.3K to our import. If I open up this app.module.ts file, we can see the ng module is 317k and browser module is 27.8k. We can see here the import cost seems to like this import a lot better than the ng module above, given that it's in green versus red. Now I do realize we can't do anything about this ng module import, but it does help you understand the impact of your import statements. Number six on the list is version lens. It displays the version for each package in your package.json file. 
It also allows you to upgrade packages with a single click. So back in VS Code, we see that I have version lens installed. And if I open up my package.json file, we can see that we now have a little V in the top right corner. It says show dependency versions. If I click on that, we now see these extra annotations above each of the packages. So for example, we have Angular animations and we have version 17.0.8 and we can see that the latest is 17.1.3. And if we look at the copy files package, we can see that it's the latest. Let's try upgrading our TypeScript package. We can see that we have version 4.9.3 and we just want to bump it to 4.9.5. Once we do that, we can now see that the latest is 5.3.3. Let's go ahead and upgrade completely to the latest. And now our top script package is set to the latest available. Now all we need to do is run npm install to pull down that package. Number seven on the list is Code Runner. It allows you to instantly run code in your files with the press of a key. So back in VS Code, we can see that I have Code Runner installed. And if I open up a JavaScript file, I can instantly run this file by pressing Control alt n Once I press that, we can see that I'm taken to the output panel and we get the output of that JavaScript code. We can also highlight code in that file and press Control alt n and run only the code that's selected. And here we can see the output, hello world. This extension is great for just testing out quick functions or just using as a scratch pad. Number eight on the list is Jest, and it adds full Jest support to VS Code. And once that's installed, we now see a new testing icon in the activity bar. We can see that it's auto run the tests in my project. And if we expand each of these little dropdowns, we can see each of my tests. We can also run the tests again or debug the test. Also, if we open up the Explorer and navigate to our test file, we can see these green check marks beside each of our tests. And if I change one of these tests to fail, and then save the file, we can see that test is now failing. That's indicated by the red X. We'll change that back, save the file, and now all of our tests are passing again. If we want to run a particular test again, we could just click on the check mark and it runs that test. We can also run the entire test suite. This extension is really nice if you're using the Jest framework for testing. Number nine on the list is Turbo Console Log. It allows you to instantly add console log statements to your code. So here we are in VS Code, and I've installed the Turbo Console Log extension, and now let's see it in action. So here I have this JavaScript file open, and let's say I want to log out this filtered variable to the console. We can just select filtered, and then press Control Alt L, and it appends a console log statement to the line below. We can see that it puts the function name, the variable name, and the value. This works with multiple cursors as well. When we're done with all of these console logs, we can just press Alt Shift D and it removes all of the statements from our file. And last but not least at number 10 is GitHub's Copilot. Once the extension's installed, we get a new icon in the activity bar for Copilot's chat. If we click on that, we can see that I need to sign in. I'll just go ahead and do that real quick. And now that I'm signed in, we can see that I can ask GitHub's Copilot questions. So for example, how to create a function in JavaScript. And here we can see that GitHub's replied and tells me exactly how to create a function in JavaScript. I can copy this code or insert it at the cursor if I had a file open. If I open up a JavaScript file, we can see that I get several features there as well. So for example, if I highlight this calculator function and then right click, go to Copilot and say, explain this, it will give me a written explanation of what the selected code does. I can also right click, start inline chat and ask Copilot to edit the code. So for example, I could say, change the switch statement to an if else and hit enter. Now we can see the changes that Copilot made. On the left is the old switch statement that I had. And on the right is a bunch of if else statements to replace the switch statement. And we can choose to accept or discard the changes. In this particular case, I'm gonna to choose to discard the changes, but you can see where this would be very helpful in writing JavaScript code or really any code of any language. And there you have it, the top 10 JavaScript extensions in VS Code. If you found this video helpful, check out this other video where I go over 10 VS Code extensions that will make you code faster. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.